Hey everyone, this is Sunny Justice with It's a Crime and Shame. Now, of course, before we get started into this video, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell for all the latest notifications on the videos and lives that we do. I will be starting a live at approximately 5.30 this morning, my time. Obviously, there's an eight hour difference to the UK time. And also, if you don't mind, please give this video a like and a share. Now, in this video, it's obviously, of course, about the Nicola Bully inquest. And I will be putting the uh, times as they come along by the different uh, media sources that are putting them out there and put them in chronological order for you. If you look at the times above, you will see that they are in order and I'll be doing that um, for a while anyway and um, let you guys read, of course, all the ones that are out here. Prayers for Nicola Bully and all the family members. Okay, so obviously the inquest was supposed to start at 10, and I think it's just maybe possibly getting underway now. So, police and uh, security presence at the inquest, the high-profile nature of Nicola Bully's disappearance, and the search to find her means that the inquest is being treated differently to others. More than 30 members of the press are expected to be in attendance, and extra security guards have been brought in to help out at the county hall. Police liaison officers from Lancashire Constabulary are outside County Hall ahead of the inquest, which begins around 10 a.m., which we know it hasn't. Uh, liaison officers help guide families through the criminal justice system and procedures, which can sometimes be complex. So, timings of the day. The inquest will run from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., and there will be a lunch break, then from 2 p.m. until 4 to 5 p.m., all those attending the inquest are being escorted in and around the building. The vast majority of Lancashire Coroner's officers and clerks are here. Security guards are in the council chamber as members of the public start to be escorted in. Witnesses are being brought in ahead of evidence starting. Witnesses are now being brought into council chamber. The chamber is a large room with a mezzanine balcony area. Uh, the coroner, Dr. James Adelaide, will sit at the front with a coroner's officer at his side. Witnesses will take in a turn to sit in the witness box just in front of the coroner with any family immediately in front of and to the left of the coroner. Legal teams arrive. Terry Wilcox and Sophia Cartwright, KC, part of the legal team representing Nicola's family, have just arrived in court sat behind where any relatives will be sitting in a row of 10 people understood to be witnesses. Everyone is being brought into the chamber in small groups. Nicola's partner and sister due to give evidence. Nicola's partner and sister are set to give evidence during the inquest into her death. Paul Ansel and Louise Cunningham are both listed as witnesses and are due to give evidence on Tuesday. So at 10.14, it was tweeted out, Nicholas' family set to give evidence, which we just heard. Nicholas' partner and sister are set to give evidence during the inquest into her death. Paul Ansel and Louise Cunningham are both listed as witnesses and are due to give evidence on Tuesday. The county hall in Preston was busy with members of the public and media on Monday morning ahead of the two-day hearing. I know that was repetitive, but I'm just going in order of the chronological way that they've been said this morning. Senior police officers arrived. Three senior police officers from Lancashire Constabulary have just been brought in, including Detective Superintendent Rebecca Smith. The coroner's officer has just arrived in court and is placing files and documents in front of where the coroner will sit. Family representatives, Nicola's family, partner Paul Ansel, parents Ernie and Dorothy Bully, and sister Louise Cunningham will be represented at the inquest by solicitor Terry Wilcox, of Hudgegill Solicitors and Sophia Cartwright KC of Dean's Court Chambers. Ahead of today's proceedings, a spokesperson for the firm said Nicola's disappearance in January led to a widespread media coverage and inaccurate social media speculation. Her family are hopeful and confident that the inquest process will establish true facts, a clear timeline of what happened and how Nicola died. Her family will not be making any comments until all evidence has been heard and until the coroner has delivered his conclusion. So at 10.32, it says inquest due to start shortly. 
We're still waiting for the proceedings to begin. Witnesses are still being brought in and we don't appear to have any members of the public yet. All press and members of the public were required to register their attendance in advance as places were limited. Several members of the public were seen being turned away at the security cordon outside of the entrance to County Hall as they had not re yet registered in advance. The coroner, Dr. James Adelaide, is the most senior coroner in Lancashire and has a wealth of experience. Readers may have seen him on a recent documentary, Cause of Death. Dr. Adelaide is a former ENT consultant and a barrister. Lancashire also has two coroners as well as several assistant coroners who combine the role with other jobs, typically barristers. So at 1036, it says witnesses are still being brought in, sat behind where any relatives will be sitting in a row of 10 people, understood to be witnesses. Everyone is being brought into the chamber in small groups. Dr. James Adelaide is an experienced coroner, used to dealing with high profile and contentious matters, and it appears a lot of thought and preparations has gone into the planning of the inquest. Terry Wilcox and Sophie Cartwright, KC, part of the legal team representing Nicola's family, have arrived in court as have three senior police officers from Lancashire Constabulary. Constabulary. The coroner's officer has also entered the room to place documents in front of where the coroner will sit. Among those due to give evidence are Paul Ansel and Louise Cunningham, Louis Bo Nicola Bully's partner and sister. It is understood that they will speak on Tuesday. Detective Superintendent Rebecca Smith, who led the investigation into Nicola's disappearance, is also in the court. Nicola's family to arrive in court. Nicola's partner Paul Ansel and her mom and dad's sister have just arrived in court. They sat on the front row. Paul is sat next to Nicola's sister Louise Cunningham wearing a light blue long sleeve shirt. He, uh, he has remained silent since coming into court, expressionless. He is looking straight ahead to where the coroner will sit. Nicola's sister Louise is glancing around the room while her parents Ernest and Dot are sat silently. Members of the public turned away. Property proceedings are still yet to properly begin. It's 1051, as you can see. All press and members of the public were required to register their attendance in advance as places were limited. Several members of the public were seen being turned away to, at the uh, security cordon out of the entrance of County Hall as they had not yet registered in advance. Okay, so the coroner in court and addresses the family. The coroner, Dr. James Adelaide, has now arrived in court and addresses the family. I am sorry that you are attending court under these circumstances. You have my deepest condolences, and I would be grateful if you would pass that on to the children who are not in court for obvious reasons. So this one says 1053 that Nicholas family and friends under court. That's obviously Heather Gibbons, Nicholas partner Paul Ansel, and her parents Ernest Bowie. Uh, Ernest and Dot Bully and her sister Louise Cunningham have arrived in court and sat in the front row. Paul Ansel is sat next to Louise Cunningham, which we just read, uh, wearing a light blue long sleeve shirt and has remained silent since coming into court. And of course, again, that's uh, Heather Gib uh, Gibbons. Family tells Corner to refer to Nicola as Nikki. Nicola's family tell the coroner they would prefer him to refer to her as Nikki. Dr. Adderley says he's aware that there is an extensive social media and press interest. Okay, so day one witness, 1106. Witnesses giving evidence on the first day. Home office pathologist, a police diver, Professor Tipton and Dr. Morgan, who are experts in how people drowned, an expert on bloody body flotation after death nine members of the public who were in the area of the river wire when Nikki went missing and De um, Detective Superintendent Rebecca Smith. The second day of the inquest, we'll hear from uh, Dr. Nikki's GP and members of her family. Okay, so coroner issues a contempt of court warning. The coroner has taken the unusual step of warning members of the public. If anyone has the slightest inclination or is contemplating disrupting this inquest, they should be aware this may amount to contempt of court. Dr. Adderley said that if there's any such incidents occur, individuals will be allowed the opportunity to speak to a legal advocate before being brought before him here at County Hall charged with contempt of court. The coroner warned the consequences could be a significant fine or prison. Okay, you guys, so at 1124, evidence from the pathologist reveals classic signs of asphyxia. 
Home office pathologist Dr. Allison Armour is giving evidence. She carried out a post-mortem examination on February 21st, two days after Nikki's body was found. Dr. Armour says that there was a bruise on the back of Nikki's left thigh and grass and vegetation around her feet. There were several other bruises on her body, including both on the front and back of her right arm. That at 11.30, the cause of death given as drowning, Dr. Armour concluded Nikki was alive when she entered the water. She said, I have concluded that the cause of death was drowning because of the following factors. The watery fluid within the stomach, the lungs, showed typical or classical features we have seen in cases of drowning. Okay, so the police divers give evidence. We're now hearing from PC Matthew Thackeray from the Police Northwest Underwater Diving Team. PC Thackeray has been a police diver for eight years. Okay, you guys, I really wanna know your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Um, I'm just kind of trying to take it all in myself. I wanna hear what you guys have to say.